Hello, hello everyone. This is Carolise and today we're going to be talking about the business analyst job role. We're going to be exploring the business analyst work environment, what the role of the business analyst is, who they're going to be working with. It's going to be great, so stay tuned. I will be right back. So the business analyst job role okay we're gonna be talking about that today and it is a part of your career starter I did a video already about the business analyst work environment so this is like a continuation of that so if you have the babak you know that the role of the business analyst can be very wide right it's not just um, you know the, the job title that says business analyst business analyst is any person who performs business analysis tasks described in the ballot guide no matter their job title or organizational role right so business analyst goes outside of just the job title that says business analyst and this is a guy i follow on linkedin and he's pretty pretty good i think he has every single iiba um, certification possible he's very very accomplished with that and so he made a post that I thought was very useful for this discussion where he says flavors of business analysis so there's business needs analysis business information analysis business process analysis business performance analysis business strategy analysis business portfolio analysis business capabilities analysis and many more so there's a lot of flavors when it comes to business analysis so in terms of the job titles, as we said before, that it's not just the title that says business analyst, but it could be a variety of titles that are doing business analysis functions. So obviously the first one would be business analyst, but there's also process, business process analyst. And that's the person that's going to really be working on the flows, being able to understand each of the steps to get something done more efficiently and how you hand that off to a different department. Those are the kinds of things that a business process analyst would be doing. There's also the functional analyst, which is very similar to the IT business analyst, which we have on the opposite side. Um, there's product owner. And we've, we've noticed that there's a trend towards business analysts becoming product owner. Um, there's a lot of overlap in what they do, but I would say that the product owner is mainly into the IT side of business analysis, whereas business analysts could be broader. It could be broader, right? Um, but it depends also on your organization, how they structure things. In some cases, the product owner has much more uh, strategic direction as to where the product is going as opposed to the business analyst. And it could also be vice versa. Then there's product manager and project manager. So these are also persons that are performing business analysis, right? If you're managing a product or you're managing a project. IT project coordinator is also a good one. Information technology lead is also a good one. Information technology manager. Of course, these are very specific to IT. And as we know, business analysis is not just an IT role. There's business systems analyst. And I would say that that one, I have not seen as much of late. Um, it tends to be that the systems analyst role is disappearing. That's what I see because there's so many out of the box tools that you don't really have to do the systems analysis that you used to do before. The system analyst normally is the one that sits between uh, the business analyst and the developer. They provide a lot of the, the structure that the developer needs to know, such as things like your sequence diagrams, your relationship models, stuff like that used to be heavily done by the systems analyst, but we don't have that as much. I haven't seen as much of it, at least in my experience of late, right? Process analyst is another good one. Again, working with processes and improving them. Process coordinator, kind of the same thing. IT business analyst, which is very similar to functional business analyst, where you're really working on a software project and you're helping that project to come to fruition, or even if it's a product, but you're doing a lot of IT specific things. Usability analyst, user experience designer. These are also very good roles 
that do do some amount of business analysis. And the good thing there is that if you can couple design with your analysis skills, I think you'd be very, very marketable because people are looking for um, that mix out there in the market. Business consultant. I mean, I would think that would be business analyst consultant. So there's a lot of consultation jobs out there for short term projects that people just want to, you know, companies just want to hire someone for a specific reason. And so they get a consultant to come in and do that. Business solutions architect. That one is also a kind of business analysis, I would say, but there's a lot of engineering and architecture going on for, you know, making sure that the solution is has a, the proper architecture, which I think kind of moves us out of the realm of business analysis a little bit, but you know, it's still an applicable VA role. Then you have chief information officer. So business analysis can be at any level, right? It could be at the strategic level, it could be the middle, middle management level or the functional level. And so for the CIO, they are doing business analysis, but it's more at the strategic level. It's more looking out to see what's the initiative that we need to take to make the company better, to make the infrastructure better from an IT perspective, from a client perspective, but it's really strategic looking out further and at a higher level than the regular business analyst or the functional business analyst will be at. So this is a strategic business analyst uh, role. Process architect, also important data analyst, and there's technical data analyst, data analyst, um, enterprise solutions designer and business intelligence analyst. I would say the data analyst and the business intelligence analyst are very important emerging roles because big data is a big thing. People have volumes of data, um, especially if you're you're doing you know business to consumer transactions and there's so much information that you need to process. And the data analyst and the business intelligence analyst is going to be helpful in getting that data, crunching those numbers and making sense of it. So this is also a business analyst role, but I would say it's very much geared into unstructured data or even structured data, but it's really spending a lot of time, you know, making sense of this volume of data as opposed to spending time using the data for, you know, a business specific problem, right? So that's where that goes. All right, so if you if you had any doubts about the business analyst and the data analyst or the data scientist, here is a nice little slide that will explain the differences for you. So the business analyst looks into client and business, whereas the data, an, the data analyst or data scientist primarily models and analyzes data, right? The business analysts communicate with clients to understand the business, whereas the data scientists delve into business generated data to extract meaningful insights. The business analysts work only with structured data, only when it's structured, but the data analyst is working with structured or unstructured data, as I was saying before. So that's some of the differences between the business analyst role and the data analyst role. Now I have a question for you. Where does the business analyst belong? And this is something I got from a podcast. I think it was on the modern analyst podcast. I could be wrong, but this was a very interesting podcast about where does the business analyst sit? Is it with IT? Is it with the business or is it neither? What do you think? So I'll tell you, it's really both, right? So it sits between the IT and the business, because if it's an IT role, especially because, you know, the business analyst is the bridge. We are the bridge that, that, that helps these two teams communicate and understand each other. The business knows what it knows. The IT knows what it knows, but we don't seem to be able to communicate that very well across. There needs to be someone who can take the business problem and make sense of it, you know, brings it down to a level that it can be easily attacked and easily solved in bite-sized pieces and be able to explain all of that to the IT so that they now can take these different pieces and go off and solve them and by solving them they solve the bigger problem. So the IT guys know the how, the business knows what and it's the business analyst's job to make sure that those two work right that i can understand what your problem is i can do my analysis and understand what i need to do to solve it i can verify with you and make sure that you agree and once everybody on the business side agrees i could take that solution and make it into you know manageable chunks 
that the IT team can go off and build to solve this problem. So that's really what the business analyst does. And if it's a company that doesn't have a strong IT project to go with everything, it's just business analysis from the process improvement perspective. It's still the same because you're at the bridge, you're in between, you're, at, you're not sitting in any one bucket, but you're helping all the buckets to communicate better. So here is a org chart I got off the web, right? So this is not from any particular company. And it just shows you a typical structure uh, of probably the IT department uh, in a company where you have the CIO at the head and you have the VPs who report up to the CIO. And then below the VPs, you could have a slew of different roles, such as the business analyst role, the technical specialist role, uh, the DevOps manager role. So all of these middle managers, uh, there. And sometimes a business analyst doesn't have a direct report, but there's nobody under you, but you have to manage all the tasks that you have and all the people that you have to communicate with. So um, the business analyst is a, man is a middle manager role, even if you have no one reporting up to you. But in the real world, most of the time you do yourself report to someone. So in this structure, it says that, you know, with this org chart, the business analyst is reporting up to uh, the VP or director, but in some cases there's a role in between that and that's usually the project manager or the product manager. So sometimes you have a project management office that hands all these projects and you might be the business analyst working on one of those projects or you might have a product management office and they are just handling the product throughout its lifetime and you report up through that channel as well. So who will you be working with? Here I have a number of different departments that you would be interfacing with at some point, depending on the type of business you're in, but expect to be talking to clients, to be talking to partners, to be talking to suppliers, to be talking to customer service people, to be talking to support people, to be talking to legal, to be talking to marketing, sales, operations, HR, implementation, finance, uh, trainers, logistics, uh, technical writers, developers, and QA. So obviously, if you're into the IT world, you're going to be talking to developers and QA much more often than the others, right? Um, but you will be talking to others. So get used to having a lot of conversations and uh, that's going to be a big part of the role. So the working conditions is that you could find a job as a full-time or as a contract or as a consultant. I mean, these are the general different types of ways you're employed. I would say that if you're getting a contract job or a consultation job, the pay per hour is higher because you're not getting all the benefits. But if you get the full-time job, it's probably a little bit lower, but you have the security of having a permanent job. I don't believe there's any such thing as a permanent job <laughs> because you could lose your job in time. And once you don't own your own company, then you're at risk. To lose your job so it's just having a long term but i hate to use the word permanent uh, full-time is a is a good word um but it's definitely not a permanent job so work work sometimes requires travel but depends on the industry so sometimes these jobs might say you have to have 75 percent traveling where you have to keep going to some client site or something like that from the office but now with COVID, everybody's kind of working strangely. We're all working uh, virtually anyway. So maybe that's not a concern anymore about the travel. Um, but there could definitely be requirements and restrictions on the traveling. Uh, and you yourself have to be willing to travel in some capacity. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be like you have to choose a job that's requiring you to go keep going somewhere. I certainly don't have that demands um, in the jobs I've worked. So you can be a business analyst without having to do extensive travel, just that you need to clarify that uh, upfront. Sometimes requires interaction with executives and upper management. So yes, yeah, so sometimes you have to talk to executive level, like you have to make a presentation to the executive team because maybe what you're working on is so uh, strategically important that they want you to, to talk about it. And sometimes you can pawn that off to your manager because the manager might not know as much detail as you do. Uh, sometimes the manager, like the project manager or the product manager may present and then they have you in the room to, to support them if there's any question that they need to have answered. But sometimes you're doing it yourself. So just be comfortable 
or just get over the hump, get over the nervousness. <laughs> Believe me, it's it's okay. You know, it's gonna be okay uh, to just go in there. And when you get into that room, you know that you're the subject matter expert. You know the most about what you're coming up with, so you can speak to it with clarity because you understand it the most. Okay, even if the people in the room are higher level than you or bigger, you know, bigger bosses than you, in that moment on that topic, you're the boss because you know the most. Right? So take that with confidence and go out there and do your presentation to executive levels and board of directors and anybody else who wants to come along, right? So that's part of it. There's a heavy people skills that's without saying, you have to talk to people, you have to interact with people. So you're gonna need some people skills to do this job. Now we're getting into some statistics that I got from the 2019 IIBA uh, Global Salary Survey. So based on what they have found, 71% of BA professionals are actually practicing agile approaches. So agile is getting a lot of adoption. And so as you're looking to become a business analyst, you have to understand agile and you have to make endeavors to understand what it is because this is the this is what's going on in the world that you're going into, right? So <laughs> people are doing agile more than waterfall, so you need to get with that. There's also more adoption from you see from this graph, just companies in general are trending towards agile methodologies. So that's what's going on. It was 50% in 2017, 69% uh, in 2018 and 71% in 2019. So that's a big jump. So the adoption is very, very high. And top five areas where business analysts practice agile include information technology, of course, business process management, project management, change management, and product ownership. Also in terms of the industries where business analysts are working, there are 30% of business analysts are working in the information technology sector. 26% uh, are working in finance. So I think of this as being FinTech and insurance companies. That's where 26% of the business analysts are working. There is a 9% in the government sector. There's a 10% of the jobs are in services, business professionals, consulting, and things like that. And a 5% for healthcare and social services. So I was a bit surprised about the healthcare because I thought there were more healthcare BAs out there than this. the business analyst job role and the working environment for business analysts. I really hope that you found this useful. I hope that you learned something new. And uh, if you like the video, please click the like button and also click the subscribe button. I appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.